Hey, greetings. Welcome, everyone. It is GleeCon, and I'm back, bringing you another episode of Lore of Warcraft. Thanks for tuning in. On our last episode, we began the third issue of the five-issue run of the World of Warcraft official magazine, something that is a little tricky to find, but you can find it here on this channel. We just got the issue started with the first feature that really talked about what was the state of the world as the Alliance, as the Cataclysm expansion was about to kick off. Um, we are also have been playing World of Warcraft Classic together. We've been going through every single zone, every class, and uh, we are getting close to finishing up Ashen Bale. So stay a while and listen as we take Talanji, our troll rogue, as she, we've already finished it with the Alliance. We've done every quest in the zone. We're now going to do that same thing with the Horde. We've actually been doing it for some time. And in some ways, it is a little trickier to do it with the Horde. Um, but we're close. We have to finish our Shredder Operating Manual. We have to do the Stator Horns, which you do for both factions. It's probably what we're going to focus on today. And then we've got some uh, quests to get us through Black Valley. Greetings, traveler. Once we have filled the empty file, we can send it along to my associate Rao in the Thousand Needles. He was the one who requested the file of water, so he'll better know how we can make use of it. Very good. This should fill Rao's request just fine. Could you deliver this to him? You might enjoy spending some time out in the needles. So this is sort of a... Bring a, the filled file to Rao Cliffrunner at the Free Wind Post in southeastern Thousand Needles. You can get to the Thousand Needles by taking the Great Lift at the southern edge of the Barrens. I wouldn't be surprised if you can help us out further. So this quest line is now one that she's tied to. It's going to be, have to have to be something that we try doing. It's a level 29 quest. It's going to take us at the very end. It's going to take us down here where we're going to have to go now to Free Wind Post. Um, we can take a peek. Uh, first of all, we have to go back to Ashenville because Linder Tree Post. Oh, yeah, that's... It said south of Splinter Street Post, but really, I mean, it's... What are they? I don't, I don't know what he just said. <laughs> he said something. Um, uh, bop, 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 bop. Free Wind Post is where he wants us to go. I don't know why. All right, so we have Seder Horns to accomplish right now, and that is pretty much it, unless something happens while we're here, or unless there's a part two, which there might be. Oh, you know what I forgot to buy? I wonder if there is a place to buy poisons in this little area. Probably not, what brings you unfortunately, because we did not buy any poisons. Let's, just watch over you. Let's see if I can buy poisons anywhere in Ashenvale. Uh, Warcraft Classic by Poison in Ashenvale, or whatever, Poison Reagents, really. Um, out of date, no, we want Horde. Uh, yikes. Yeah, that's, that's crazy out of date. Um... So, there's your alliance. This is Horde. Mm, no, there is a place in the Barrens. Uh, look, that's. Those are Burning Crusades, so there's really not a lot. Um, although, if you look, there is one in the Barrens. So, if we go over to the crossroads, we can get some more poison. Yikes. Um, how do we make our poison? We need Essence of Pain. Could you have bought it in Thunderblock? Um, Orgrimmar, no. We couldn't have got it there anyway. So, we are potentially going to be out. Whatever. We'll, we'll have to, we will have to go back to Orgrimmar, I guess, just solely for that purpose. We need more poison supplies. Um... And we'll have to do that at the end of this. Well, you know what? We're going to need to, to level up anyway, to level 26. So I guess we'll we'll go and after we kill some satyrs, maybe we'll get lucky and we'll be able to kill satyrs within 30 minutes or so. Um, I don't remember. There might be another quest that comes after this one. 
this if this is the last one then cool this is maybe it would be an easy one for us we can also of course do the, the it said there's one in the barrens if that's the case we'll start going towards completing the sacred flame let's let's also let's look that up right now and um i really typed that in wrong uh Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a peek at this here. Um, so step two, he wants you to go to, and then when you are there, he says, using the water you've brought, you'll be able to temporarily douse the flames that holds the centaur relic. It won't look permanently. Um, The heavily guarded part of the crag. So it's one quest that will result in either a bow or a leather waist. Okay. Um, the flame is in the lowest part of the cave, guarded by two guards, level 30. It shows the hoof in the loot window. It gets rid of the water and doesn't allow you to get the quest. Now, there is a chance, because I'm a rogue, there's a way, powerful bow, it'll require practice with death runs, essentially you're death running your way, I can stealth my way into the cave, so I'm not as worried about that, I can get there, it's just about the two guys. If you're still, okay. If once there you're red, it's behind the can basically go to the flame behind the stone column. The guards will not aggro. The flame is yours to click on. Okay, so there is a way for us to solo that quest. So if we have nothing else after this doozy of a quest, look at that guy. Well, he's a someone that could murder me on sight, so I'm not gonna mess with him. Uh, this is if you remember the harder of the bases to enter so i guess if we have time what i'll do is i'll go to the baron well i'm gonna need to learn my my moves so we could we could get our way to the bottom we'll, um it is too we'll try that one quest essentially Oh, see, yeah, it's not worth, um, it is honestly and truly, it's not worth trying to backstab. Certainly not creatures that are higher level than you. Yeah, like, this is already is going to be a bit of a pain. Dang it. Now I've got to, like, I can't even, nothing I can really do. Ah. Uh, I can't wait until I get the cheaper, I don't know what it's going to be, cheaper Sinister Strike or... Okay, let's see. Now we're getting close. I think I should be able to do it. Okay, so I could kill him. We have page one, which I don't need. I did get a horn. I don't have any food. I don't think I do. Alright, so we'll at least use a bandage. What? Why did it die so fast? You stinker. I mean, I can get more bandages here, but there's no real point right now. Um, I think it might be easier if we go to the other spot across the river up there. The mobs are just lower level, and while we won't get quite as much XP, um, we won't have to worry about like having to do a full rejuvenation on the way down, so there's that. I think I think it'll be worth it in the long run. It'll be worth the little bit of time that we do on this run right here to save all of the downtime in between each kill. And it looks like we will be able to do this Sacred Flame quest. We don't need the bow, but we'll take the belt. Um, actually, we have this belt. We just recently got the Deftkin belt, so I don't know. That was the belt that gives us 12 attack power plus 54 3. So this one gives a, it doesn't say that it's technically one more quest out. But either way, whatever. We'll do it for the XP or for the lulls. 
Dang it, I gotta, we gotta find a way. Yeah, I guess we can maybe come around here. I don't usually come this way to, to... Oh, 28, wolf, yikes. Yeah, we're essentially in, in, well, it's not the hardest part of the valley, because the part with the, de I'm surprised there's no quest that have sent us to those demons right there. I wonder if that's something that comes up. Uh, you can get some Burning Crusade type stuff, maybe. I don't know. Oh yeah, we might as well have our, we, we obviously died. So our ore wasn't back on, but see, even crossing the river here, now we're down into 24, 25 territory. But yeah, so if there's not a second thing, then if there is, we're going to do this other one too. And we'll save that, uh, I guess I haven't explored Zabian yet. Um, and Nightmare, okay. Oh gosh. Okay, Mr. Bear. Alright, at 25, maybe? Yeah, it's, it's, when we're kind of looking at it, it's like we're going between the, oh, come on, I hate that. Yeah, we got a torn bear pup, but even just fighting that bear without any particularly good rotation or strategy, significantly less downtime. Are you kidding me? There's a, I, oh, I forgot, we've already done this song and dance. We're not really equipped for... Cannot do that yet. Iron deposits. Now, if you do, as I think we've kind of already experienced this, if you wait, well, how did he heal? I wish we could just eat that big bear meat raw. I mean, we're a troll. You would think. But you know what? I don't think there's anything that can do that. That would be a cool race. There should be some race that's like animal-like, and then it like, you get the opportunity to. Oh no! Okay, so now I'm screwed. Run from that one. Oh my gosh! Okay, he stopped. Don't don't do it. I don't want to go too far. See what happens. I think maybe I moved last time, and that's what messed up my bandage. I don't know. Alright, so I wasn't quite at full when I aggroed that guy, and then there's this guy. See, we could see that's not good, yeah. The animals typically have better, but I don't, I guess they don't give bears that heightened stealth detection. We don't care about them. This is who we want. We want these satyrs so that we can do what we did on the other episode. Hopefully we have a, when I did this quest later on off camera, I had a much higher RNG. Um, so it didn't take an hour or whatever like it took for us when we made it. See that time uh, I was able to Get the oh so rare pickpocket and um, the cut. There we go. We got another horn. I was get, able to get that rare pickpocket assassination combo, but that was good. We got the. Uh, I am out of range. Okay, we got it again. I'll take that. Okay, we'll see. Maybe he hit me with this. Oh my god. I think that's uh that's unfortunate when they hit you with that curse too, because we don't really have any options. We got a third one. Physical damage done. Lame. So yeah, our options are low. 
I hear one, you hear him? This guy. Maybe if we try to pickpocket from... Oh, he, maybe he has higher stealth detection. Okay, so I missed him. But yeah, we have the reduced physical damage. I do hate. That time I hit him with the ambush, but it was uh, not successful. They hit you with this thing too, which just makes it to where you can't cast spells. Uh, see, there's really a big difference when you got that minus 10 DPS when you're going off of someone that is hitting constant small hits. That's a big deal. So it's actually the perfect stupid debuff for them to use on us. I hear another one. There he is. If we get lucky again. It is too far away. Okay. Try to go with the Okay. I mean we're gonna most likely run out of our stupid instant poison before things get good. Yeah, that, that, that that five second can't cast spells, it's sorta of like it's like a kick. But even stronger. We miss when it counts. Page nine. I think I hear another. All right, so I had six, seven, eight. Ooh, I no nine, ten, eleven. So I already had a page nine. All right, let's use a bandage. All right, so so far I've found two pages, but they're neither one of them is the two pages that I need. I was going to say that guy's going to get a CB. Alright, my debuff wore off at least, so I'll take that. And it's the stupid, um, whatever, the foul wield, or the ones that are kind of like casters or something. They're the ones that cast that curse. That is one of the worst curses, though. Alright, I think I'm going to wait until he's jumped. Yeah. I'm going to hit him with that. Okay. So, we're doing okay. We have three out of the six, four out of the 16 horns. There's people killing over there. So, let's see what we can do. Um, yeah, it's a warlock. Again, we've done this kind of thing before. It doesn't necessarily behoove us to team up. I hear one. There he is right there. Like if you wait too long. Oh, we got a healing potion though. Oh my gosh. Uh, this guy's higher level than any of them that we've done, but that is worth any. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now I gotta go all out because I'm fighting two. I don't know if I can win. I'm gonna burn through the healing potion immediately. Okay, so now we're fighting this guy. This is going to take... This is going to take some significant luck on my part. Okay. Oh, he dodged it. You stinker. Okay. Ooh. Well, we did get... Another Shredder operating page. What did we get? Another page nine? Two page nines in a row. Alright, so we did not have to burn our potion. Ooh, look, we have a chest. Maybe we, we, we can get some food out of that bad boy. We need it. Um, no more horns out of those couple kills. Are you kidding me? Mana potions and briar thorns? Someone had to have even taken that. A melee class. That's not a alchemist. Had to have already looted through that one. That's so lame. Okay, got some copper from that guy. I think these fell scorn here are the ones that. Okay, I think these are the ones that can get you. I say I don't think. I... Yeah, that was good though. We got out of there without 
We got out of there with the horn. Look, oh, I thought that was another chest back there, but twerked. It twerked. There might be a stealth guy here. I hear one. Where is he at? I can hear him. There he is right there. Okay, so if I if I bludgeon him, if I sap him, maybe go for both. Oh man. Not enough energy. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. This is probably a bad idea, honestly. And I, yeah, I might as well run right now. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to burn my potion. If I had my cooldowns, I would try it again, but not, nah, not like this. I have plenty of wool, so I don't mind using the, the bandages every time I can. What else am I using them for? I mean, sure, you could sell them and make a little bit of money. Oh, we're so close to leveling up. That might have actually been a good... Could have maybe pulled off. Do you have to be behind on the sap? I don't know. What is this guy doing? He's level 32. Okay, so I do think this stealth guy is over here still. He probably dropped right back into stealth. Yeah. Got me a junk box. I'll take that. Okay. Alright, so we are going to go ahead and clear this path out. Don't do it. Don't do a curse on me. Um, we didn't get anything, but we did get a junk box. So we can practice our luck picking on that. Well, I'm glad I didn't, like, hold out because I hope that that level up is going to save me. As it didn't. Alright, so now we have this rogue. As I've said before... <clears throat> A chance to hit. As I've said before, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say. Um, I truly don't. I don't remember. I was going to talk about the bad drop rate of the of the robes. Yay! Okay, what do we got? All right, let's in decrease that ability. So now we have five point discount on the rogues. I hear one. Where are you at? You're somewhere. Which side? Seemed like I got... There we go. As I say, it seemed like it got louder when I got closer. Ah. I thought I was in the right spot for it, but I wasn't. Alright, so now what are we? Level 25? 26. Yeah. So that's good. Um, we have hit 26 with this character. It, it again, it shrinks that. Um... Arr, arr. We got another horn. Okay, There's another ro rogue over there. Yeah, and or was I going to talk about that? These fell sworn are the jerks that can put that lame curse on you. I don't know. Are we going to talk about the pickpocketing? I don't know. You know these guys, you can sled shred them pretty fast. No! Agnabbit. I was just about to try to... Oh, I did get another horn. So, as you can see, like, from when we did this on the other episode... Or, now, knock on wood, I don't want to jinx this. The RNG is way better already. Got a junk box. So I don't know what he was trying to do, if he was trying to be polite. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, you know what? My poisons have worn off. I've used them. Because unlike in, in uh, retail, not only do the... 
not only do the poisons... Oh my gosh, come on. Not only do they um, require the 30 minutes or whatever, but they also... Every proc takes off one of their freaking... They only have, I think it's like 30 procs or something, so... We're gonna have to buy a lot more. Great, who's over here? So now we are... out of here. Or was I going to talk about the fact that this is a, a higher level area? I mean, a lower level and we should stick to here? I I don't know. I hear it. It's stealthy poo. Where are you? There he is. So we do need more poison. We'll, we'll get it from crossroads, I guess. Oh, I think I have a batter in lot box to check out. Ready yet. Say, so what are you gonna do to me? That I that can't. Well, actually, it is the Shadow Sworn. Now we'll be ready to take this guy in. Um, I do think that we. I was gonna say, I do think we have a lockbox we can open up here. Yeah. Is that mutton? We do, we have mutton chops too. That's good, so we have some food. Just silver here and there. Copper, not even silver. Not even silver or gold. Just... Oh, ouch. Alright, these stinking fell swarm. I'm gonna try to hit a gouge. Just to interrupt its sort of life cycle a little bit. No, you jerk. Legitimately annoying. Legitimately annoying. I can't believe you. Okay. I mean, whatever. I guess if I... Not ready. Not ready. It's not ready. Um, just... This, this RNG so far has been much better. I don't know if we just had incredibly bad luck that episode, or what? Because then, I mean, most likely that's what it was. Most likely we just had incredibly bad luck. I want this dagger chance to go up. I mean, this dagger leveling up. We got some silk. Oh, you can't stealth and do that, but. So as I mentioned um, before, we have a couple. We have a couple uh, days, two to three days that um, we're going to be away from the show after today. So um, I'll miss you guys, but not personal. I mean, it's for personal reasons because it's uh, going out of town on that secret, secret trip. Um, I want to talk more about this other thing I alluded to on the last episode or two episodes ago about um, this Christmas plan that I have, but I don't want my voice to carry because I do have a, a voice that carries. Um, and uh, Milady is home in the other room, and uh, while she's probably not going to overhear what I'm recording, she, I swear, if whatever the worst possible time would be for her to hear, that's when she'll hear me. Okay, we got page eight again. I think that's one we already had. Six, seven, eight. We need five. We need five and twelve. All right, so we're just stacking pages on pages and pages on lane. Pages and pages and pages. I mean, but you know what? This is not a bad place to grind. Um, we end up having to grind out. That's another thing. We have the shredder thing, so. Might be a decent place. We could also look up and see, like, where every time I'm getting a spot going, and luckily these guys respawn super fast, but that little Nomi, no Morlock, he is out here 
farming the zone to oblivion with me. But I mean, there's enough satyrs, I think, that we can still semi-comfortably farm for both of us. He's probably just doing the same thing I am. What am I at? 11. So we're doing... We're doing way better than we did last time. And, you know, there's still... We still need five more, so there's still significant time for us to get bad luck on that front. Uh, but I think it's pretty good. This, this is just rogue v rogue crime we're doing right now. Nice. Okay, three quarters of the way done. Four horns to go. Now, I don't know about you, but I see two horns on this guy's head, so... Kalanji, how about we just, uh, you know, get it under control a little bit here. So I'm thinking for our... We'll have to come up with some cool names um, for when we do our Wrath of the Lich King and uh, Outlands run. Like, well, because these are all based on characters. And we don't want them to be, like, so big. Like, we don't want to name one of our characters, like, Thrall, you know? Um, we're going to be dealing with a Draenei. I don't care if it's going to be male or female. Um, and we're going to be dealing with a Paladin. Blood Elf Paladin, again. Don't care about necessarily the gender. Dang it, we got cursed again. Of course we did. Um, so we needed one. So we're going to be kind of beholden to that. We're going to need to think of some some shaman, some Draenei shamans, and they don't even have to be from back then. Page six. You saw. Oh, sorry, I must have forgotten to uh, silence the old bone. I normally again do do that with uh, when my lady's here because they're not here because she's my only person usually that texts me other than family um, sure like a buddy might text me from time to time but it's very rare most of my the phone etiquette that I follow with my friends um, I mean, I don't know. I'm getting to that age, too. Or, or maybe it's not just age. Maybe it's just me. I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm antisocial. I'm actually, like, anyone that knows me considers me like a, kind of like a social butterfly. But in actuality, as soon as I get out from a public setting, I am extremely, like, um, a solo isolationist kind of dude. Like, I could be just as happy, um... I could be just as happy doing my own thing. Alone. Like, for just about indefinite amounts of time. Now, I'm sure, at some point, there'd be some kind of... Like, psychosocial aspect that I had to deal with if I was alone for too long, but... I really, um... I really am comfortable... Just entertaining myself, being, living, living a solo life. I did, uh, I've had a lot of experiences. Like I've talked before, I'm, I'm really into hiking. Um, solo hiking is, is totally fun. I've, I, I like it, I like it just as much as hiking with other people. Family, um, oh, we got a couple, another couple of our homes too. We just need three more. Um, I spent a lot of time, especially in my younger days, um, sort of hiking and living alone. Uh, my family was super dysfunctional. Oops, I used the wrong thing. So, um, from the time I was probably about, uh, from the time I was about 16, on, in some way, shape, or form, I was living, like, on my own, on my own. Um, at that, that age range, you're kind of limited in your options, so it was a lot of the times just moving from place to place and, you know, a lot of reliance on people that, you know, people that have helped me throughout the years. But by the time I was 18, I was, like, the day I turned 18. By then, once I could, like, legally sign papers and get places, 
I've been on, I, you know, I've been so long. I mean, I've been living, sustaining myself since then. Um, ooh, we got two, two to go. But sometimes that's not feasible, and there were times in my life for sure when I was homeless and just too far away. living either out of a car if I had a car or living. There was a time period in my life when I just kind of lived. I, I used to work the graveyards, so I just had to pass days by and I would just pass them like in parks or forests or whatever. And, uh... Oh my gosh, another! We got three sixes! So, during that point, that's that was a time period in my life, I think, when you learn, you learn how to sleep in a lot of situations. You learn, I learned how to be really, how to find peace in life when other people might be miserable. So, I think there was, I wouldn't take those times back. Um, I don't see them as like this miserable time period in my life. It's, so I guess I was, you know, it is what it, whatever you make of it. As a creature, as creatures, we, um, at some point we were all like that. We were all just a natural man living in the woods. So the concept of not having some zip code and house to, to tie it to yourself is not, not the end all be all. It's not like that's all that there can be. Um, you can be fine. If you can find food, however that is. I'm not gonna go out. I wasn't going out and hunting like squirrels or anything. I, you know, I, I could scrounge up food from wherever I worked or whatever. Um, but you got to be, uh, you know, for me, being able to have a a, a spiritual life was important, and um, having an appreciation for nature. Uh, I I wasn't living in a place that had like snow or anything like that, so that would make things difficult for sure all right we're at 125 that's pretty good i think that puts us up now we can learn those heavy heavy wool stop for now that's good i just wanted to just stock up uh, but yeah there's a lot of um those that those that know me or or work with me or whatever people that i've met um there is lots of chapters of my life that shock just just shock people um, I've spent extensive time living on both coasts uh, I I have that you know we all have uh, have elements of our childhood that make interesting stories so of course I have that mine is you know maybe more shocking it's not that mine is so unique but I think based on who I am now and where I you know, the type of facade that I wear, it, it shocks a lot of people where I come from. Um, and then, um, like my childhood in school, the troubles that I used to have, which it gives me a, um, a patience for other human beings. And I think that probably more than anything else. My own journey, more than anything else, has informed the way that I interact. And I think there's a lot of other people that are just a lot less patient with other human beings, a lot less understanding. And it's maybe because they had slightly more linear or insulated existences. And um, I've, I've been able to, you know, live a lot of lives and see a lot of different people. And, experience what so many different versions of normal um, that it really 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 has helped me keep an open mind just for the fact that there's just so many rights and wrongs or so many perspectives and, you know, I was listening to uh, a podcast the other day, and the there was, it was actually with a, a former sur Surgeon General, um, just coincidentally was the guest on this podcast. It wasn't like I was listening to Surgeon General podcast. <laughs> um, but he kept coming back to the concept of love 
for whatever reason, it was just his, you know, his drum he wanted to beat. And he said the the interviewers were kind of interested in, that he kept taking it there. And in his mind, he was like, well, in my opinion, love is, is the best medicine for all things. And I've long had this philosophy and not everyone agrees with me, but I am like, it's one of the, one of the parts of my belief system that I cannot, that I am like 100% certain I'm right on. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? And that is that... That this bear is gonna try to eat me. Don't do it, bear. <laughs> uh, that iron is still there. Still going hot. Trying to get myself out. I'm only get. <laughs> Look at this! Oh my gosh. Okay. At this point, I'm using a bandage. So my philosophy. Uh, one of my one of the key things I believe in life is that um, every negative emotion that we have, every single one, comes out of fear. So whether we're whether it's rage or hate. Um, envy, jealousy, greed, um, insecurity, fear, like, well, obviously fear comes from fear, Ugh. uh, but yeah, just anything you can think of. And I think the mo the one that people have the hardest time for is, is anger, rage, you know, how can you say that some of these things come out of fear and, and, uh, you know, I, I could take it on a case by case basis. And, uh, and address why I think that's the case. Just had this conversation the other day with somebody at work um, who was making some bad choices and um, then they were defending their actions because they were essentially saying that other, you know, someone else at work was a jerk to them and was yelling at them and, and uh, I brought this philosophy up to kind of help to explain from my perspective why some of us might be acting the way we were acting in that particular situation. And who knows, you know, they might think I'm an idiot. They might just be like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, but it was funny because I, I haven't heard, it's not a super, super popular um, take for whatever reason. I think it's... I mean, again, it's, it's my own life experience. It's it's what I've gleaned from the world. I think, you know, you yell because you're afraid. I think you get angry. And I think frustration comes from that. Now, the frustration, the fear can be simple. The fear can be selfish. The fear can be, you know, like a mom might be yelling and mad at their child for not doing the dishes. And, well, now that gets to be a little bit more complicated. Uh, but sh the fear on the surface could just be, I'm afraid that, the responsibility of the dishes is going to come down to me, but then and, you, and then then you can unravel it and say, well, I'm also afraid that this this could develop into a pattern. I'm afraid that it's indicative of your respect for me. Um, I'm afraid of what my life, what people would think of me if I, you know, if I had uh, lived in a house that was a pigsty. I, I'm, I'm I might be literally afraid of germs. You know, um, power dynamics can can start to become into play, and, and afraid that we're losing some of our some of our power and autonomy if other people if, that we're that we're living with are treated. And it all could just be all of these convoluted things um, and frustrations are all tied to fears, and they could all be about something as benign as you know someone not doing the dishes. What the heck? I totally overshot my journey here. So, I like this, and you're probably not going to shake me off that that belief. Um, but maybe, if you think about it, it could be, uh, maybe you agree with me. Maybe you've already had this thought. So anyway, uh, I thought it was interesting because I'm listening to this podcast, the Surgeon General here, or former Surgeon General, and, and uh, he says essentially the same thing but he he hadn't evolved he had evolved this theory and he said i essentially believe that everything in earth in the world comes out of two emotions 
He said, everything negative comes from fear and everything positive comes from love. And he supposes that the opposite of, of fear, I think baked into this concept, I don't think he exactly says this, but I think it's kind of implied that the opposite of fear is love. And, and you hear it said all the time before, and I, I've actually said this to my daughters who are older now, the opposite of love is not hate. Um, and, and from a romantic sense, I'd say, oh, well, the opposite of, of love is not hate. It's, it's nothing. Someone meaning nothing to you. And actually, that's not the opposite of love. It's just the absence of love in all of its form. And, and in my mind, that was as far as you can go. But no, I think if you go so far to where you're just afraid um, and there's no positive things and then to fully lean into something that could make you afraid and instead let your actions be inspired by positive behaviors, that is where we get, uh, that's where love comes into play. And I love, I like that, that idea. Be careful out there. Be careful out there. I hope you can be quick about getting those horns, Talanji. I'm heading back to Ratchet soon. These are perfect, adventurer. Thanks for helping me out. Oh, and this is for your time. This is for your time. I'm friendly with Ratchet now, so the goblins now love me. And we did it. We have essentially wrapped on uh, Ashenvale. Now, we do have Black Fathom Deeps. We have to do those. And like I said before, that's going to take us a couple. We have about 15 Where minutes, like so let's do it. Let's try to finish off this Sacred Flame quest. We're going to go down to... I'm going to go to the crossroads just because I want to buy those poisons. Who sells it? I think we were looking it up. And then we're going to do this Sacred Flame quest. So we're going to try our best to do this scouting mission. I don't know if it's going to work. We're going to see. we got to look up the poison vendors in... Hula, ma Hula Mahi. Yeah, he's at Crossroads. Hula Mahi. So that's what we're going to go to. We're flying there, and it's on the way. Works a soul. Oh, that's actually not that hard of a quest. Petty, not sweaty. A hunter only girl killed. Hanging out and petting pets. Weird. So I don't know where that all came from. I can't remember where I was going with all of that, but uh, I do think. It, tying it back over into my overall kind of like life structure here and and I've done it again I've taken an episode about lore of Warcraft and I've made it this, this uh, <laughs> complete navel gazing episode about me um, and uh, there you go sorry if you've, if you've stuck with me this long if I somehow get a subscriber on this episode you are great uh, you're cool um in Classic Plus? What's Classic Plus? I'm going to have to look up what is Classic... What is Warcraft Classic Plus? Is that Season? Classic Plus is basically Classic with all new content. Um, I see. So, is, so it's not necessarily, <clears throat> are they really going to do it? So, is, let's see if, if Warcraft Classic Plus is really going to be a thing. Um, no, I don't, I don't, I don't see. All right, so we're looking for that troll. That's not him. This, well, I guess the trade supplies, but his name's How you doing, Tariqua. Oh, what do I need for, I do need empty vials. Let's sell, oh, look at all these battered block boxes. Later. So first let's open up this stuff and then we'll sell off to this guy before we continue our journey to the south. 
Um, because we have a little bit of time left on this episode, and why not finish off the Sacred Flame so it will really, really be done. And then we'll be set up to do Black Fathom Deeps and the associated quests on the next time around. But I want po poisons for that. Yeah, so I'm not leveling up these. I mean, they're green, I guess. It's part of it. Cool. Got four scratching sticks. Isn't that great? Okay. Um, Talk to me. I do need the empty vials. So, oops. Well, I guess I'm going to be buying 40. Sure. I don't need linen. I don't need those shoes. Okay, 6, 7, 8. Nope, and then 9, 10, 11. So I only need 5 and 12. Again, you could save them. You could sell them. I don't... I could save the jade. That's something I could save. Okay, I don't need that stuff. Alright, so... I'll save the rest of this stuff. We're gonna make some poison. So that's... It was Hadiqua or whatever they said the name was. That's Quran. Let's see, where is it this guy? I don't know, it's Apothecary. You'd think he might have something. There. Hulama. Hulamahi. Alright, so what do I need? Essence of Pain? Yeah. So... I probably should have just shift clicked and bought, but whatever. We're gonna buy 40. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and make the poisons. Oh yeah, look, I can increase my poison leveling up. Cool. I'll take it. Oh no! I'm using crippling poisons. Are you freaking kidding me? Bummer, bro. I don't want that. I mean, I can save it, I guess. I'm losing money. Dag nab it. Ah, oh, that's painful. Painful. I need the other. I need instant. I need dust of decay. So now I need 38. Well, that was a shame that I did that. Um, whatever. It's not the end of the world. We lost some money, but... I... Oh, yeah, I need to go there, too, but we'll, whatever. We'll do it after the fact. So I'm going to make these poisons. Let's see how far they can stack. They probably only do 20 stacks. If they do 10 stacks, I'm never doing this much again. But we do go through them pretty fast, so it's not like the complete end of the world or anything. We do... Oh, you know what? We need these shredder... We need these operating manuals. So I guess we're going to be going back to do that. What am I going to do with... What am I going to do about that? Aye, aye, aye. Well, you know what? We could check out the auction house because if they really are 10 or whatever, those last two pages, we can check that out. Not on this episode, but on the but on the next one. We can we can give the an old check out. Yeah, so it looks like it will stack to at least 20, so that's good. Maybe we'll get lucky and it'll stack more. Uh, I don't know where it's going to go. 20, okay, good. Yeah, so it's going to fill up there. Which, that's fine. And, you know, it's giving us greater poison, I guess. It's... We get these level ups from it, so that's cool. We'll miss you, bike. My, my bike is once a week logging on. He is famous on the server, but what do you look? That's, I guess we, we log on less than once a week with, with if you consider all the alts. But we do log on. I mean, I log on just about every day. Not always every single day. Um, okay, so we did our poisons. It was a little bit of time consuming this, but. Uh, now go ahead and fly the rest of the way. My wind riders are trained to fly to the south. The hot baron's air. It's only a silver, so that's good. 
Pink paying 20k for a binding ruined or auction house truth. All right. Um Yeah, so we're going to try to do the sacred flame quest just because why the heck not? It's a, it's definitely too high past our level. Um Moo, you happy now? The bots and gold sellers. I mean, sure. Gold buyers ruined it. Well, that makes the most sense, honestly, because if it's translating real money into gold, that destroys the economy. But that gold's got to be out there existing somewhere. It's just boosting ruined wow. I mean, I wouldn't say that, but paid boosting, that is painful. Sure, boosting, getting friends together and boosting one another in general. Right, it's, a, my, it's been going on since real vanilla days. It's not that boosting is, is a pain. I don't think that, that concept is bad. It's, it's paying, making it an industry. And then if you're paying an in-game currency, who cares? Time ruined well. Sure. So I I don't even mind the boosting. Now the spam for boosting it can be an obnoxious, but if it's just like, hey, I'm gonna do a boosting run. Anybody want in? Fine. I guess I can't really complain with that either. It's when they're just like a thousand boosters spamming chat over and over again, then it's too far. The 19th Amendment ruined America? What the heck? I don't, I'm, I'm not a history buff enough to know, but I feel like that's like women voting or something like that. I'm going to look that up as we walk across it. So, yeah, women voting. <laughs> oh, jerks. People talking politics ruin fun, but also like you're he, they're not even talking politics. They're trying to be ironically sexist, I hope. While also like trying to toot their own hat, like I'm gonna talk about the 19th Amendment, and then if people know about it, that means they know about their amendments. There you go, see, nothing like straight up misogyny. world needs more patriarchy. No matter what year it is, you always have at least 30 grown men in AF AFK and org all day showing off gear that all looks the same. Um, I don't know. I guess. Do people do that? Just stand around an org all day? AFK? I've never done it to show off gear. I've certainly... I've spent a huge portion of my life. Um, see, total time played on this character is only one day, but if we were to go to my actual main, I used to spend so much time AFK. Um, it's probably embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, we're going to look on the next episode. Uh, uh, actually, I'm not even going to look on the next episode. I'll do it off camera. I'll see how much it is. If it's only around 10 silver or so when I go to learn my powers as a rogue, um, I'll look into buying those last two pages that we need. Ghosts of Loot Town. Number two, Ghost Name Guild. Number one, in Not Accepting Hexus. Number three, in Karate. Floor Tanks? I don't even know what that... I don't get it. Floor Tanks. Looking to expand our ranks. Alright, so... What we're, what we're doing now is trying to pursue this Sacred Flame quest. Um, we are going to go to the Thousand Needles. And then we're going to have to get into... Somehow we're going to have to get to Free Wind Post. Turn that in. And then he's going to send us to this Centaur area. And once we're in the centaur area, we're going to try our best to stealth through a cave full of level 30s. And, uh, 
I should have bought Vanish Powder. Ay ay ay. Oh well, when I'm in, when I'm getting my road powers, I'll do that. So that does mean on the next episode, we're gonna do Black Fathom Deeps. Yeah, uh, I, because we can turn. We don't have to turn this one in right away on the next episode. We can turn it in when, when we're doing our turn ins. Um, that's probably a good idea. So, uh, except I kind of want to get it out of my inventory. Well, whatever. It's fine. Whatever. Cobra Kai never dies. I don't know. I, I tried to watch that show. I heard a lot of good things. I watched like one or two episodes of it. And then I was like, eh. Not really my jam. You know what I've been watching lately? And this is the old man in me. I've been watching the original like first season of Saturday Night Live. Like 1975. And just, it's kind of a trip. It's I, I just do things like that uh, sometimes. And my wife is like, what? I don't even know how your brain works. But, you know, you're watching, like, original George Carlin and, uh, you know, Jim Belushi, Andy Warhol, Chevy Chase. And you got the musical guests, like, Simon and Garfunkel, um, stuff like that on there. And it's just a, a trip to... One, to see these people when they were young and watch their rise to fame. So that's interesting. Although it's a little different with Saturday Night Live with the first season because unlike now, a lot of these people are already famous. Uh, when they in, in the first season, like Jim Belushi and uh, Chevy Chase had some measure of fame going into the show and that was why they were picked up so a little different than what it became which is just a factory for making comedic actors all right so we are now we, we have never done this on camera actually i think we did we turned in a quest right there with someone but we are essentially branching into new care territory here we are going uh out into the this is a smaller zone, Thousand Needles. Uh, we're 26, so we're a little bit weak to be out here. And we're, we are going to f make, take our way over here to s the Free Wind Post. Um, or whatever it's called, not Free Wind, maybe it's Free I don't remember which post it's called. And then we are going to uh, turn that quest in and get the, the one other quest in the Sacred Flame. Line. And we're getting a little bit. We're at 10:20. We're about 30% of the way. So my guess is we'll easily be 27, which is what I predicted uh, a few episodes back, where we would be by the time we finished Black Fathom Beefs. We'll probably be 27 and a half, and then sh this character Talaji, she will be on the path to. Uh, Stranglethorn Vale North. We'll do the first half. Stranglethorn Vale is such a big zone. You can really do more than one thing. Uh, but yeah, this is officially new territory. Let's see how strong the mobs are. Level 27, Pester Hide Hyena. So absolutely within the realm of what we can fight. So that's good because I was kind of, I've been kind of scared of the zone. I don't know why. Just been kind of feeling like, I don't know if I can handle it. Um, it's a big jump, but really, it's okay. I think we'll be okay. I remember questing in this zone back in the day with, uh, not with my human, but with my first max level horde, my Tauren Arms Warrior. I can remember, what's this? Level 27, 27, 27. So those are all level 27s, and we're level 26, so... While certainly not on the easy side of things, definitely... This is the zone we can do. And we're 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 not like on the fringes of the zone. We're marching in there. So probably on these fringes things will be higher, and that's why you start to get into that level 35 range and stuff like that with uh some of what you see on the quests. I think we have to get up there somehow. So now it's gonna be a matter of finding the entrance. What's that? 
26, Cloud Serpent. We're not going to explore this <clears throat> little mini town. We're not going to do anything. Because now we are coming up over what has turned into... Oh, we're finishing early. Now we're not. There's free wind posts. Free wind posts. Okay, so now it's a matter of... I think we read in one of those posts just now that it's... The entrance is on the southern part of the... Uh, yeah, you can kind of see. There you go. So you kind of walk up and around from here. Interesting. This would be a good spot to be like a, a mage or um, maybe a, a priest where you could do your, your slow fall or levitation or whatever. Because we're going to have to get down as well as up. Look at that. That's interesting. It's just like rocking around the Christmas tree. You know, just rocking back and forth. That's pretty cool. Neato. Like it's about to fall any second. Okay, so that's a lamp post. We are going to continue. Look, there's a tin vein. There's still tin here, so... Can't be that advanced of a zone. Uh, we might as well pick up the... Um, we might as well pick up the flight path while we're here, too. So in case she needs to come back, we've got this area. This is the only horde flight path in the zone. So that's cool. Oh my gosh, how annoying is this? We got a switch back right here? Bro. Right. And then how am I going to get down to the bottom? Quickly. There should be like a parachute service. Bungee jump service. Because we're going to have to walk all the way back down. When we could just easily jump off. Annoying. This Lost Pages quest is now orange instead of red. So that shows progress. Alrighty, we made it to the top. Here's our flight path. Pick that up from nice. Nice, nice, baby. And an innkeeper. Cool. Uh, General I goods. Thing for you. Nothing. No, you have no thing for me. The winds guide you. I don't suppose you've been sent by Zangan. Hmm, mm, yes. This vial of water will serve our purposes perfectly. Because of the shared ancestry of the Dryads and the Centaurs, the water of the Moon Wells will enable us to breach the protection of the eternal flame surrounding the Centaur Relic. Eh? Using the water... Interesting about their shared ancestry. To ...temporarily douse the flame that holds the Centaur Relic. It will not work permanently, however, so you will have to be quick about it. You will find Split Hoof Crag, the Centaur's stronghold, to the north of here. The flame is kept in Split Hoof Hold, a heavily guarded part of the crag. Be careful, though. The Galak Centaur have great numbers here, and will be rather reluctant to surrender something so dear to them. Okay, so we're gonna try. We're gonna sure try. Um, up there, sorta kinda near the start, and now we've gotta make our way down. I really, truly wish that we could not walk. Like, I wish we could just fall. But that's not what we have to do. We've got to walk all the way around this stupid mountain. And then we're going to have to walk all the way back. Oh, this is where we got to be careful with the speed. <laughs> Little butthole clenching right there. Alright, I'm getting messaged. That's probably my wife saying, you have a family, you know, you should be back. And she says, join my family plan on Super Duolingo. She's been wanting to do that for a while. I do, I'm a Duolingo guy. I do it constantly. I love languages. Um, I actually have been doing it way longer than her. But I think she's maybe, I don't know, like, she's been doing it for like, 
two or three months now. She's super into it now. Like she does, she does way more than I do. Um, like I do just a few, like I'll do three or four lessons a day. Like little, in, not full circles if you're familiar with it, like just three or four. And I, I mostly do Spanish, but I, I'll slip like a French in. Um, once a day I'll do like a French and, and I, I compete. I just do enough to stay in the top 10 so that I, um, why is he inviting me to join floor tanks? You are, I, you, uh, eat, uh, um, but she's been really wanting and I was like, ah, as, you know, as our anniversary present to herself, she doesn't know about the secret I talked about. I was like, yeah, we should just do, you know, get the family Duolingo. You want it? Just go ahead. Because, well, I also was spoiled for like the first, for the past like almost year, I've been essentially getting like super Duolingo if it is like you. I've been getting some kind of weird super Duolingo hybrid for free. So normally like, if you do the paid version, you have infinite lives. So basically you have infinite mistakes. I didn't have that. I still had lives. Um, then you also would have, uh, yeah, I'm going to go into stealth mode here. Actually, look at that. you also had, um, You also had, uh, you gain the ability to do like these challenges every week. Like, um, there are like these, there's like these flashcards you can do and there's this weekly like ramp up challenge and I don't, they're not particularly like awesome or engaging or whatever, but the flashcards if you get good at them, they are worth so much. Like a typical lesson could be worth like 10 XP. So even if you get bonuses for no mistakes and then you get some bonuses for like, let's say you do a double XP, you can get double XP a few times a day, depending on what you do. How on earth do I get up there? Is that the entrance? That's probably it right there. Um, but with flashcards, if you do flash, if you can get to the last round of the flashcards, each flashcard takes a, a minute. You get a minute and a half to do the set of matching, and you get like a hundred. You get if you do if you do it while you have double XP, then you can get a hundred and twenty XP. So for every minute and a half, you can get hundred and twenty XP, which is ridiculously fast. Even if you do an easy lesson, you can blow through a regular lesson. You're it's going to take you, you know. 10, 20 minutes. Oh, there's a scout. See, he's 25. We should be able to stealth path past him, no problem. Okay, so look, these guys actually aren't that hard. They're level 25, 24. Okay, now without the. Without a vanished token, this is going to be a little tricky. Oh man. That was tight. That was hairy right there. Um, luckily, I think if they were higher level, I'd have been screwed. But I think we're just high enough that they're not getting me on that stealth detection. Or if they had some of their hyenas or whatever. But basically, my, I was I had this. I, I don't know if it was a glitch. I don't know why, but I could do all that for free. Normally, it costs uh, thirty diamonds to do every challenge. Anytime you want to do like flashcards or whatever, if you just want to attempt it. So I'm pretty good. Like I have like a hundred ninety nine percent chance I'm gonna beat the challenge at any time I do it. Oh no! Are you freaking kidding me? I wish 
to God. I'm gonna die. Now, they did say that this was a possibility. Um, I just screwed up. I just got too close to that person. But they had said, if you are back there, there's a chance that you can not aggro. Also, that was one guard. I can take one. They said, oh, it's guarded by two? That's one. So I can take one. I can do that. Now I'm pretty confident. And now I can res back there. Um, and then we can try to sneak out or whatever. A little bit bummed out that we got right up to the end and I died, but at least it was like a, okay, we can just one suicide run to get me as close as possible. Um, but yeah, for like a year, I've been getting this weird hybrid where I can do all of that stuff without paying the diamonds. Also, you have to pay 100 diamonds if you want to like legendary mode a, uh, a level, which it's worth 80 XP when you do that. So it's worth, you know, four times as much as it normally would be. And plus your thing makes it like looks cool. So I've been getting all that for free. I just don't get the infinite lives. So bas basically I have like some weird hybrid version of almost, but I haven't ever paid for anything. And it would never give me the ads to make my account a premium account. So it, it had all that turned off. So it was like some weird glitch I had. And then uh, the other day, my wife's friend, uh, who does pay for the premium service, friended me. And it might just be a coincidence, <clears throat> but the same time she friended me, I... Um, Great. Okay. That light is not ready yet. Okay. I'm gonna try. I don't know if I can beat a level 30. I screwed up. It should have been back here. I used all my stuff. We're gonna see. Probably screwed. But I think what you need to do is be right here. Yeah, so I died again, but it's right there. So they did say behind the pillar. So that's where I have to, um, I think that's where it's said. Or perhaps that. Shaman or whoever's back there can uh, help clear it. Level thirty is a little bit too much for a little too rich for my blood. Uh, that was that was too hard. I probably I did pop my one potion, so kind of screwed on that. Um, that is what it is. Don't have my poisons going. Cryborg. Now could I have sapped and done it? Sure. But I do believe they said if you're like right behind that pillar, it won't aggro. That's what we that's what I read on that one thing. So I'm gonna try it again. It said it won't aggro the guards and you can do it. So we're gonna try that. I thought, you know, oh I'm far enough back, they won't aggro, but it didn't didn't say that. So you do have to open up the case. You have to quench the flame and grab the item. And I don't know how long sap lasts. Maybe we'll look that up. Um, last 25 seconds. So it's probably enough. If we die this time, I'm going to see if I can spawn somewhere slightly differently and then sap. Stealth and sap. We're going to try it. Now if there's really two, you're screwed. I'm screwed. But it does look like there's only the one. Nope, now there's a second. So now I am truly screwed. Let's 
see, this time it said if you're behind this pillar, I want to perfectly do it. Yeah, it's working. Look, I'm not aggroing. I got the cloven hoof. So, it worked. Excellent. So now you see uh, that is a way. Ah, I'm gonna die. And, well, that's good. I wanna get close enough to the front of the cave that I don't have to. And then I think I'm in the wake of that Torin that got out. Yeah, we got out. So that's good. Actually, look, yeah, he's killed them all, so. That's a Torin. I'll help him fight. I don't even know what he is. Is he a shaman? He looked like he was healing. But I think he's like, okay, we... Alright, so... That will help. That one silver will help offset the cost of dying twice that we're going to have to eat here. But now we just have to get home. Uh, we have to get back to that sacred flame and once we turn that quest in we'll be done it's a little longer this lap episodes end up taking you know a little more than the time i would otherwise have given to it but even these mobs like sure we had to kill a couple level 30s at the end but this is not that bad if you just pick your way back very slowly um and since this is a quest line that's only available From, uh, <clears throat> from Asheville. Now, I do worry. There are sometimes just things where it's like, you're not even, you can't be quite sure where the trigger is. Like, what is making it? How many things are prereqs? kind of want this. Worth maybe drawing his aggro. She needs it for the, um, yeah, she's only at 105. And remember, we need to be 125. She, she definitely needs the help with her mining. I'll do some of that too off camera. I'm actually, you know what I'll do is I won't even do it off camera today. I'll get back to Milady, but I will. Um, I'll do it off camera when I'm hunting for a party for Black Fathom Deeps next time. All right, so we did manage to live. Yeah, you got a lot of level 30s here. This is. This is actually fine, like this zone. I feel a lot better having, just doing this little foray, I feel so much better about my characters being able to handle coming down to the zone. Now I just have to find the entrance and walk. We have to walk back up all the switchbacks and everything. All right, but that's pretty cool. So we've done everything other than the lost pages, which is, that's another thing I'll have to do when we're in the town. Um, we're going to have to do that on Black Fathom Deeps. Turn those quests in. I'll, I'll look into buying that. Um, but again, that's going to be in a few days because here, I definitely won't tomorrow because what's going to happen is I'm going to go to work tomorrow and then I'm going to come home and immediately leave. And so that's 0% chance. And then Saturday I will be gone the entire time. We'll be out of town. So 0% chance Saturday. Then what's going to happen is Sunday, you know, we'll check out and then it's going to depend what my wife and I are feeling. If we head right home, if we head right home, I'll be home in time to watch football and then like have my regular evening, which frequently means about half the time on, on a football day, I'll just make the episode after. But if we decide to linger around and go like shopping or whatever and then catch the football game out while we are out and about, like go watch a sports bar or restaurant or something, then I'm not even going to be home until later in the day. And then if that's the case, um, then it'll be by the time I get home, it's going to be later in the evening. And I'm not going to feel like it. 
My son's birthday is also the next day. It's on Monday, Little Glee Clown. <laughs> so uh, we'll probably have to do some present wrapping or something. Got some, got some presents for the young lad. Um, not going to say what they are since he's recently infiltrated my channel with a few of his friends. Not him, though. He's not a subscriber. <laughs> Even though... He, especially in the original episodes, did editing work on the show. No. <laughs> Alright, let's turn this in here. Uh, I've I, been expecting I am you. eager to put my hands upon the cloven hoof. Have you taken it yet? I sense a strange energy emanating from the hoof. I have no doubt that we will discover surprising new information about the centaur from its study. All right, so Thanks, adventurer. Now I must begin to decipher the mysteries you have brought to me. I don't think I want to do it because so in that case I'll I'll take the bow. Because if we're looking at just the sash, it um it's 2 points greater armor, the same amount of stamina, and I'm trading for agility for 7 intellect and then I'm also losing the 12 attack power. I don't like it. I, I'd prefer to have the 12 attack, attack power. If it was attack versus beasts, we could start to consider that, but nah. Alright, so... This is just a lore keeper? Hey. He actually has a scroll of intellect that he has selling. So, selling it. The butcher is not going to have anything. I kind of want to sell some of this other stuff. But anyway, alright, we'll, we'll, we'll mess with it after. Alright, so we have another episode in the pipe 5x5. Five five. I thank you as always so much for watching and for tuning in. You guys are awesome. See you next time on the next episode of Lore of Warcraft.